Welcome to part two of the Navigate journey. We talked about the idea of a center, what it means to find that. Now I want you to understand as you know and experience that center, you can move out to initiate. Now, as we think about initiating change, initiating transformation, guiding ourselves along the path of self-leadership, because that's where all leadership begins, we've got to remind ourselves that we're not a blank slate. Uh, we are in no way <laughs> a blank slate. We are a combination of our genetics, our nature, and our experiences, our nurture. You know, this is why in the parenting program we have, we say, your children aren't a blank slate to be written on, but something to be studied. And the same is true of you. When you zero in on an awareness of who you are, this center of what it means to know you, you initiate out and find growth. Now, for most people, they're not aware at all that there is a there there. That's why in so many common embracings of consciousness or journeys or whatever you want to think of it as, we go to this extreme in the West anyway, to the Eastern mindset that there is no there there because the burden of existence, the insecurities of what it means to, to lead ourselves and to own our lives can become so exhausting and deflating and challenging. And so we go to this other extreme. Well, I want you to see that there's a part of your experience that is that is an illusion, but there is a there there. I've actually got it written up on the dry erase board here behind me. Uh, there's these three concentric circles. And the outer circle, most of our experience, is lived in the space of what I want to think about myself and what I want others to think about me. We could call this personality. Personality is really a, a, a conflating of all of the experiences that you've been through and your genetics, the way that you try to defend yourself from pain. Because once you get underneath personality, you see there's a layer of shame there where we feel bad about who we are. And as you journey deep enough through the shame, you find that there. You find who you are. You find yourself. That's why it's so easier to figure out who you are by first starting with who you're not. And we want to do a deep exploration of that in this session. Now, I could take somebody and coach them every day for three years on productivity enhancements. That won't change their life as much as coaching them for one session where you position them to get a revelation, a deep insight about who they are, a deep insight about where they are, a deep insight about what they're trying to protect or defend themselves from. So my life has been defined by what I build out of my lightning strike moments, my revelations. I, I build consistency and structure around that moment, that clicking in of insight. And I want to show you how to peel back those layers so that you can always initiate change. You can always be the kind of person who's paying attention, who's leaning in, who's not missing the gold that is happening around you. So first place that we start is that we want to tend the root. We want to tend the root. I want you to think about yourself like you're an already planted tree. You're, you already are because of the experiences, because you're alive, because you've been born, because of what you've been through and your genetics, the nature-nurture combo. So because you're already a planted tree, the first thing that we want to do is tend the root. The root is where all the depth is happening. Now, the way that I think about this, the way that I process this, that's helped me the most is at the root level, there's a movie playing in my head and I don't even know what it is until I start to peel back these layers. Now, what takes people into a place that they get stuck at the beginning of this journey is they start to, tying back to our last lesson, the windshield, they notice their thoughts. And so they start to become aware Ah, oh, I am more than my thoughts. I'm more than my, my feelings, my experiences. I'm more than my gender, my race, my creed, my sexuality. You, your identity is more than all the parts and pieces, okay? But as people start to notice their thoughts with the windshield exercise that we gave you last time, what follows after that is a real challenge because they fall into one or two ditches. Ditch one that they fall into is they start to over-identify. They, they notice the thought and they feel themselves separate from it, but then they start to loop around on it. The other ditch that happens for people all the time is they see the thought that they wish they could change and they want to hype themselves past it. And this is where you find a lot of people in self-help get on this exhausting, endless treadmill that's never going to deliver you the change that you want. So how do you tend the root 
How do you get beyond the parts and pieces? Ah, this is beautiful. We start to notice where our thoughts show up in insecure ways. We start to pay attention to where our impulse, our energetic desire to lead, to avoid, to attack, to defend, whatever that is, we notice the insecurity underneath it. And the way that we do this, we move from tending the root, acknowledging there's something at work here that's deeper than my personality, deeper than the ways I feel bad about myself, and we move to where we prune the shoot. You're the tree. So what does it mean to prune the shoot, to, to rend it? to repair it. There's a tearing, there's a breaking. We're breaking away from the patterns and what we've done that got us here. Now, this is painful because in, in one way, I want to celebrate you. All of the blind spots in your leadership, all the blind spots in your reactions and your approaches, they got you here. They got you here and that's awesome. That's why your ego isn't the enemy. The, the ego is a gift. It's the feeling of insecurity that we start to wake up to the potential for change. We welcome the insecurity. This is where we're going to get the insights. When we shift the insecurity into an insight, we start to prune the shoot. We start to rend it. We repair it. We make it better. How? By zeroing in with clarity on what that insecurity is. Now, how do we zero in? on that insecurity with clarity. I want you to think about this in two extremes. There's proving, and I'm going to define these in a way that I never have in any other resource. There's, there's proving, which is where we power up, we try to take control. We feel like we're trying to, to get control, but we really feel powerless because we're frustrated. We're trying to, uh, you know what it's like when you had a plan for the day, a plan for some small, simple moment, and it's not going like you want, or a big plan. Things are getting thwarted and, and you're trying to exert your will, but you feel so powerless. So that's what happens when we're proving, when we're trying to convince ourselves or others of something externally, we're seeking to impose something on others. The other extreme is hiding. Hiding is where we give up, where we diminish, where we, uh, we could take some action, but we don't. And we create whatever labyrinth we need to create of if, then, this, that, that keeps us from taking and assuming responsibility for our lives. This too is a powerlessness. This too is a frustration because as we are hiding, we're finding ourselves disempowered, a loss of the very thing we want to find as we know our identity, which is agency. There is no more powerful choice that you'll make in your life than choosing what defines you. So if we're not proving or hiding, what do we want to do? We want to cooperate with what's unfolding. We want to cooperate with the circumstances that they're unfolding and find the through line to where we're going to be able to bring a vision to pass. Rather than fighting against the reality, we accept it. And that starts at the thought level. So I want to define really clearly for you this tension of proving or hiding, because when we learn to avoid this, we can cooperate with what is unfolding. And that, my friends, is where the growth happens. So let me give you three understandings of proving or hiding. Tension points. Tension number one, I'm going to take what this moment can give me, or I'm going to let this moment play out. So... Um, when I was meeting my in-laws for the first time, my father-in-law had invited me to be the one to grill the chicken on the barbecue. Now, because uh, how I'm wired up, I have a tendency in moments when I feel insecure to rush in. And I'm going to try to convince someone I have what it takes that I can do this. So he asked me that. He invited me into this. And guess what? I was like, sure. Here's the problem. I had never grilled before. Yeah, 21. Maybe I should have known it by then. I'm an avid fan now, but I wasn't at the time. And I can't imagine what he thought as he watched me out there on the grill. Flip the chicken. 30 seconds. Flip the chicken. I had no idea what I was doing. Flip, 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 flip. You're not supposed to do it that way. That's the way I did it. So I wanted to try to seize a moment and try to get some validation. I'm going to prove myself in this moment. What's happening when we're proving Again, we're trying to convince others or ourselves in an exerting way something that we wish we believed was true about who we are. It taps right into our insecurity.
Insecure leaders can't let a moment play out. They rush in and have to seize control. Now, there's a time to not let a moment play out. But more often than not, if you're if you have a tendency to prove, if you can't let a moment play out, you're missing the opportunity to see what's really going on and how you can bring your best leadership to bear. Second tension point to understand this proving and hiding deeper. Testing life versus enduring the mission. Testing life versus enduring the mission. This is really a function of hiding. So years ago, we were in a situation where we got into a lot of real estate complication, trouble finances uh, with the real estate crisis that had happened. And we had a house that we needed to sell so we could move. And in a sense of desperation, we had done all we could. I remember one day I just shut myself in a closet and was like, I'm not leaving till this house sells. <laughs> you know, it's this idea of like, I'm going to stay in here and, it, you know, this has to work out like I want it to, or I just give up. We do this all the time when we test life. We put these things out there. Well, if he calls on me, I'll speak up in the mission. Well, if she brings this up, then I'll address this boundary I need to define. Well, if they give me an opportunity to ask for a raise, then I'll do that. Whatever it is, we don't want to test life. We want to be the kind of people who have the vision, the mission of who we are, of who we want to become, and we just move forward on it every day. We're avoiding the tendency that I talked about in the first tension to try to control, but we're also aware in this moment that we're not trying to passively draw back and make this situation go the way we want it to, which is hiding. Tension number three, I want you to think this of me versus I want to serve you and give you what you need. I want you to think this of me versus I want to serve you and give you what you need. So what we see here is this proving and hiding starts to progress. It manifests itself in relationships. And one of my lightning strike moments that was so powerful, and I've told this story in a couple of other resources, so I'll just be brief here and say, I remember being at a restaurant with my daughter when she was three. She's now a teenager, old teenager. <laughs> and uh, I remember sitting there with her and I was going to make the moment about me. Look at me as a dad taking you. I wasn't going to say it out loud, but the narrative that I became aware of in my mind, what I began to notice as I tended the root, I noticed my thought, oh, I'm making this moment about me. And so what I did was I pruned the shoot and shifted from trying to get validation for me for what I can get to give to her so that, hey, little three-year-old, you're not responsible for the existential needs of my identity. Make no mistake. All people are insecure. All leaders are insecure. We all have insecurities. And people are proving and hiding every day in different ways. Now, we've been saying this for years, but it was great to see a resource come out a couple of years ago by Robert Keegan, the adult development specialist, who said this, everyone is doing a job they're not getting paid for at work. Everyone. And he goes through all this list of all the people that are doing it. And he calls it one thing. He says, they're hiding. Now, what we know is they're not only hiding, but they're also proving. So the adult development specialist writes a book on culture for the workplace. And he says, everybody's doing a second job. Nobody's getting paid for. Proving and hiding are a massive part of our lives. Now, the energy of this doesn't need to be we obsessively try to what? Replay or we don't need to obsessively try to kill off the proving or hiding. We replace it with the healthier truth and thoughts of who we are. I'm going to walk you through how to do that as we take the rest of this journey. But to get you there, to help you get into that space, I want you to think about taking the next step on this analogy we're using in this navigate journey. Remember, I'm helping you navigate the journey of self-leadership. And last session, we talked about the windshield. What do I want you to do in this session as an exercise? I want you to construct an antenna. This antenna, because you're in this car, has one job, and it's just to notice proving or hiding. So last time I said, just notice that you're more than your thoughts. This time I want you to notice a blaming thought, a thought where you seek validation. Whatever would show up for you where you're trying to convince yourself or others of something by overexerting yourself or diminishing yourself. Just find one place where you're seeking to overly control something or you're tolerating or avoiding something, hiding, that's going to hurt you. Listen, this is not self-centered because when you do this kind of work on yourself and you tend the root, you prune the shoot, what ends up happening is you mend the fruit of who you are. 
And as you mend the fruit of who you are, what you offer to yourself in leadership and what you offer to others becomes more whole and healthy and nourishing. It's the way of transformation. It's the way of growth. Now, it's hard to see something that you're already used to. When you see something over and over, it's hard to see it. My hope for you in this session is that you see yourself with fresh eyes. You see a depth to yourself that you may not have known was there. You see insecurities. This journey might get harder before it gets easier as you see these insecurities, the beautiful parts of who you are and the insecure parts of who you are. Because where we're headed is an experience of a transformation at the root level of your identity where everything that flows out of you, you become aware of and you're able to cooperate, not trying to prove or hide. I know it's difficult to believe in an experience that you've never had. I am telling you, you can experience at the identity level, massive shifts and transformation where you know who you are more than the roles you fulfill, the relationships you enjoy, the thoughts you have about yourself at every level. It's a playground and I'm going to be your guide, but start by working on After the Windshield, the Antenna. Peace.